Hi class, this is Professor Brooks again, and this video is designed to help you understand the mole concept. So we can break down the mole concept into a couple of learning objectives. And these learning objectives are centered around Avogadro's number and the concept of molar mass. So one objective is to use Avogadro's number to be able to convert between the number of atoms or particles in that substance versus the number of moles and then further on using that molar mass, figuring out the actual amount of grams of that substance. So using these two equivalencies of Avogadro's number and molar mass, we can easily convert between either numbers of atoms, moles of atoms, or a mass of atoms. Involved in this is the secondary learning objective of how to determine the molar mass for a given substance. And they'll see that there's different ways for determining this, depending on whether we're dealing with a covalent or an ionic compound. So just to start out, we're learning about the mole concept. We need to know what this word mole means. And it's not that cute little animal that burrows in the ground. It is actually a grouping of objects. So we're commonly using grouping terms in our language, like the word pair. So if you have a pair of socks, that means you have two socks. Or dozen means 12 of anything. So a dozen eggs, a dozen, mu dozen muffins. So a mole is usually used to describe a number of atoms or molecules, and that is equivalent to 6.022 times 10 to the 23. So how did Avogadro come up with such a strange number as being his grouping number? Well, 6.022 times 10 to the 23, that is a really strange number. And he, it's not because he wanted to make your life difficult. It, it's actually because he wanted to have a really simple, clean way of describing amounts. And so his definition is based on the amount of carbon-12 that would take or that would have a mass of 12 grams. So he knows that carbon 12 is composed of atoms with six protons and six neutrons. It has an atomic mass number of 12. So he said, okay, if I have 12 grams of that, how many atoms are in there? And it turns out that it is 6.022 times 10 to the 23. Sorry about my typo. So if you think about what this definition means, it means that if we're thinking about the uh, mass of a mole of anything, we can use the units of our mass unit being gram per mole. And that will be roughly or exactly the same numerical value as the average atomic mass unit. So for instance, we know that helium has two protons and two neutrons, and so it has an atomic number of two but its atomic mass is 4.00. This number that you're seeing at the bottom of the periodic table square is representative of both the atomic mass unit of an element, but also its molar mass. Here we can see carbon with the proton number of six. If we had another six neutrons, we would have an atomic mass of 12. You can see that the average mass of uh, carbon is a little bit larger than 12 atomic mass units or 12 grams per mole because of the contribution of the isotopes carbon-13 and carbon-14. So Amadeo Avogadro wanted to be able to have some sort of reference that he could use to determine how many particles were within an amount of matter. And it's because when, we, when matter interacts, it's at the particle level, so at the atomic level or the molecular level, not at the level that we can most easily perceive it, which is in terms of larger amounts or gram amounts. So when we're dealing with Avogadro's number, the units that we're going to be looking at are going to be written as either amount of atoms per a mole, and here you can see the abbreviation for mole, simply drop the E, or the number of molecules per mole. So we're thinking about the smallest individual unit that is undergoing, let's say, a chemical reaction. So if we wanted to convert between a molar amount and find out exactly how many atoms were composed within that, we would use the equivalency of 
6.022 times 10 to the 23 being the number of individual units, be that atoms or molecules, versus one mole. And so in this example here, we're converting between 3.5 moles of helium to find out how many atoms that uh, represents. And so we do a simple dimensional analysis where we use our Avogadro's number as our equivalency. And you can see that moles crosses out and we're left with atoms. So I'd like you to take this a look at this image here. What we're viewing is the same 400 milliliter beaker filled with exactly one mole of each of these five different substances. So in each beaker, there is exactly 6.022 times 10 to the 23 particles of the indicated substance. So you can see sulfur, iron, those are elements. We have sodium chloride and potassium dichromate, those are ionic compounds. And C12H22O11 is most commonly uh, known of as sucrose or table sugar. And what you might notice in this image is that even though we're using the same sized container and we're holding the same number of particles, the amount or the volume of these different substances is different. And in general, what we're seeing is the more complex molecules take up a larger volume. And that's because they are made up of more atoms. And so their particles or the molecules are going to be larger. Now, you know we can find the mass that would be equivalent to one mole of sulfur atoms by looking at the periodic table because the sulfur is a simple element. But now that begs the question of how would we determine the mass necessary to give us a mole of something like sodium chloride or sucrose, molecules that contain multiple atoms. And it's actually quite straightforward. So when we're talking about covalent compounds, we usually use the term molecular weight, being specific that we're looking at the mass of one mole of molecules, not just atoms. And the way we would determine the mass of a mole of molecules is simply by looking at the atoms that are within that molecule and adding up their respective masses. So the example I have here is a molecule of chloroform. You can see the ball and stick representation with a black carbon atom in the center, a single hydrogen atom up top, and three green chlorine atoms attached around the base. So in one molecule of chloroform, we have one carbon atom, one hydrogen atom, and three chlorine atoms. Using the periodic table, we can look up the average atomic mass of each of these elements. And then considering that some of those elements are present multiple times, we would then just add up the mass of each of those contributing atoms and find the total. In this case, we see that Chloroform has an atomic mass unit of 119.37, but a mole of chloroform molecules would then have a molar mass or a molecular weight in this case of 119.37 grams. Now with ionic compounds, this is a concept is very similar, except with ionic compounds, we're not dealing with individual particles of atoms connected. We're dealing more with an array of atoms that are balancing out their opposing charges. So what we're looking at here is, in the example is a small piece of sodium chloride or salt. And in this representation, Again, we're seeing ball and stick, but it's important to note that these are not covalent bonds. We're just looking at the interactions between the purple sodium ion and the green chloride anion. And in general, when we look at sodium chloride, it's going to be present in this balanced array so that there's a ratio of one sodium ion for every one chlorine ion. So to determine the molar mass of an ionic compound, we simply look at this lowest common ratio of one to one, and we call that the formula weight. So we're gonna add up the mass of one sodium ion and one chloride ion. So we find that altogether, the formula mass or the formula weight of this ionic compound 
is 58.44. So table salt has an array of sodium and chloride ions combined in a one-to-one -one ratio. So its formula mass comes to the addition of the mass of a sodium ion and the mass of a chloride ion, or 58.44 grams per mole. Armed now with an understanding of how to determine molar mass and the nature of Avogadro's number, you should now be able to readily convert between these amounts of a pure substance using the following conceptual plan. If we need to convert between mass and moles, we use molar mass. Or if we need to convert between moles and number of particles, we use Avogadro's number. And this conceptual plan can go in either direction depending on the nature of what you're trying to determine. Let's look at an example of how that could be done. So, an aluminum sphere contains 8.55 times 10 to the 22 aluminum atoms. What is the mass of that sphere? So if we read this word problem, we'll see that the value that we're starting with is the number of particles. So we're going to first enter that in as our given. We're given that we have 8.55 times 10 to the 22 aluminum atoms. And what we're being asked to find is the mass of that. So the conversions that we're going to use are, of course, Avogadro's number to get from number of particles to moles, and then molar mass to get from the moles to the mass. So we use our skills of dimensional analysis, and we first start with what we're given, and noting that its units are aluminum atoms. So we know our next conversion has to have number of aluminum atoms on the bottom, and we want to get to moles, so it's going to have to have one mole on the top. So Avogadro's number tells us that there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23 aluminum atoms per mole, and our, now our atoms cancels, we're left with moles. The next step is to use molar mass. In this case, we look at the periodic table and we find that the molar mass of aluminum is 26.98 grams per mole. I want moles to cancel, so I'll put one mole on the bottom, and I'll put my 26.98 grams of aluminum on the top. Now when I do my multiplication, moles will be canceled, and I'll be left with the mass of aluminum. And that all comes out to be 3.83 grams of aluminum. Checking our sig figs, the problem gave us three sig figs, and so I've given my answer to three sig figs. Thank you for watching this video. You'll be getting more practice with these types of problems by doing your online mastering chemistry homework and also with our live lecture class. Have fun. Bye-bye.